All right, so I'm standing in front of the Mini Dragon, and I've just finished integrating a couple ports. Uh, the other night, I built the SPC register back here, which I've currently temporarily wired in as the IP or instruction pointer register. Um, and I just finished putting together and debugging this board, which is the top half of the 16-bit adder for the ALU stack up that is right here. Uh, everything else on the CPU is 8-bit, except for the data bus and the address bus. Um, which, you know, externally to the processor, it's only got 8 bits of data and 16 bits of address, so it can address a full 64K of RAM, but all of the uh, user addressable registers that do math are 8 bits. Um, all of the other boards that are going into the ALU are all 8 bits, and the only thing that is 16 bits are anything that has to deal with the address generation, so the instruction pointer. Uh, the PC register, which is the page and cell register, and the shadow PC register. And this is the shadow PC register, um, but I'm, like I said, currently using it as the instruction pointer, and the only real difference with that is that this has a PN and a CN for the page and cell portion of this, so that software can set the upper or lower 8 bits of the SPC register to point at arbitrary RAM, even though it's 8 bit. Um, and, you know, you can still treat the whole thing as one PC register. So if you're doing indirect or relative stuff, it and something on the bottom were to like carry over, it would carry over to the top. It's not wrap around like some processors are with their page and cell style um, addressing. But um, for the current demonstration, I just wanted to make sure that the 16 bit adder that is there in order to do indirect operations on the PC shadow PC and also increment the instruction pointer at the end of every instruction was working properly. So for the time being I have uh, the 16-bit data lines wired to the lower and upper half of the 16-bit data bus. I have the outputs wired into the ALUA source um, select bus that is down here. Uh, these ones uh, and then I have the uh, some temporary wires running over to the instruction decoder in order to tell it when to input from the bus and when to output to the ALU to do addition. Um, and right now I have uh, this instruction set, which is a, uh, let's see, an add immediate right here. Um, an add immediate is basically says, hey, take the lower six bits of the instruction, sign extend it, and add it to the A register, which since I've just reset it, I guess I can hit reset again a couple times for shits and giggles. But because I've reset it, all the registers are zero. Everything is starting in basic state. So this right here would be the instruction for add one to A. And since this is the emulated memory bus, there's no way for it to go to a different register. So all it really does is just continuously add one, or I could change that value to add a different value to the A register in order to prove that everything is kind of like working and going through and clocking and stuff. Um, and so I can walk through a full instruction now because all of the pieces are here to do the entire set. So all the microcodes that are asserting are connected to the correct boards, except for I need, I need to build the PC on top of this and then the instruction pointer, and then all those will be on the backboard stack up at that point. But for now, I just wanted, like I said, to test all of this and make sure that it was all working. Because the top half of the 16-bit adder is only used for indirect address modes and stuff like that. It is not used for um, the accumulator. And the flags are also off the lower 8 bits, not the upper 8 bits. So, you know, if you're looking for a carry flag or something like that, they're all based off of just the bottom half because the top half is invisible to software that is actually running on here. So if we look um, right now, we are sitting at the first microcode. So the microcode counter is down in the back here. And the first microcode for every single instruction is um, assert the current address from the address bus into the EEPROM or the RAM and then load that into the lower 8 bits of the data bus, which is exactly what's going on here. We have 01000001, and we have 01000001. So the instruction is being looked up, and it hasn't had anything happen. So um, the microcode clocks forward on the, on the clock going up to down, so like when you would release the button if I was manually clocking it, because I have it set to manual clock mode, that's why it's not doing anything. 
um, and then when you go down to low to high, or when you push down on the clock, that's when all of the registers um, do, like, you know, actually store. And so on the up cycle, on the upswing, uh, register stores, on the downswing, the instruction pointer, or the instruction decoder will tick forward to the next microcode and update all the control signals so that, you know, there's time for the calculations to trickle through and propagation delay to work. So right now, the current microcode that is being decoded says output there to there, and then when it clocks, put it in the instruction pointer, or yeah, sorry, the instruction register. So if I clock once, you'll notice that now the instruction register down there holds the instruction that was on memory. So I don't have to have the memory bus uh, pointing at that instruction anymore. It's free to do other things, which since it is now actually loading there, the combinatorial logic is selecting this add immediate, um, I guess it's a microcode ROM board, which are programmed with um, jumpers and not jumpers in order to set the control signal since this is microcoded. So the next instruction or the next microcode says, hey, take um, the upper six bits, or sorry, the lower six bits of the instruction register, um, sign extend it and output it as the immediate. So the, on top of that is the immediate register, which is just taking from the uh, instruction register and outputting on the bus, which is exactly what we would see here. So now we see 0000001. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, so basically the instruction is decoding its own uh, immediate value and the next instruction or the next microcode that it is about to perform is going to be hey take whatever is on the bus which is being asserted by the immediate register and load it into b and the b a register is always the second operand to the alu everything is either a and b or spc and b or ip and b so the b register is actually a write only register software can't see that gets used to load up anything that got read from memory anything that gets signed extended anything that gets moved from another temporary register so that you can do math like a plus the u or v registers which are going to go up here eventually and going back to a those all get moved into the b register and then of course when you're doing like a skip instruction the flags register outputs which gets put into the b register which is how it can skip the next instruction conditionally based on flags yada 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 so if i were to clock this one more time you'll notice that down there that light came on uh it's kind of hard to see but the b register just got loaded with the value that was on the bus and now the microcode is saying hey alu no longer be choosing this default but actually go over there which is the add instruction and it's saying take a this A register plus the B register and output that onto the bus, which is what it's doing. It's taking zero plus one and it's outputting one to the bus. And it's doing a full 16 bit add because the adder is 16 bit, even though only the lower eight bits will get stored. And then if I clock this one more time, that microcode says, okay, the result of that should be stored in the A register. So there we go. We've just walked through that. Um, and now the A register has the result of adding zero to the immediate, which was one. And now the next instruction is output the Z out. So the zero out, which is another immediate that it can do. And then it's gonna load that into B so that B can be cleared so that we can, if you remember, it's always something to the B register. So the next thing we want to do is take the instruction pointer and add one to it. So we wanna clear the, uh, the B register and then it's gonna tell it, hey, add the instruction pointer plus the B register, which is set to zero, plus carry and set to one. There's like uh, carry set, carry clear, and carry from flags. Um, so that you can, you know, do add with carry or normal add, or you can, you know, whatever. And so the uh, microcode for this, if I clock this one more, you'll notice that that B register has just gotten cleared. And so now we've set zero. And now the final opcode, or sorry, the final microcode in this add immediate, which is actually on this board here, is, or, or sorry, it's, it's this one here, and then this board here is the terminate, which is why that's the only one set. So it's looking up on this um, microcode word, which is 32 bits, and it's saying, okay, cool. The final thing I want you to do is take the B register, and instead of adding it to the A register, I want you to add it to the SPC, and then I want you to output that to here, and then when I press the clock, it'll store the output back to the IP. So if I click that once more, now you'll notice that we're now in um, uh, memory position one instead of zero. So we have finished 
the instruction. And so now you notice that we're back to looking up from memory and outputting to the bus. And so if I want to say, okay, it's boring to add one to one, why don't we add uh, five to one? So if I swap that, because it's in single step mode, it is still asserting that and we haven't clocked anything. So now you notice that zero one, which is the opcode prefix for add immediate, and then we have zero 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 one zero one, which is five. So if we clock once, uh, the upper bit gets cleared because now we've loaded the instruction register and now we're doing the microcode for um, sign extend the top, um, sign, sorry, sign extend the bottom six bits, put them on the bus, and if I click through that, that gets loaded into the B register exactly the way you would expect. Now the next operation would be add five plus one, which is six, which you see is on the bus here. And when I clock it, it gets loaded into the A register. So now we've done five plus one, which is six. And now the next thing we have to do is output the zero to the bus. And when we do that, you'll notice the B register clears. And then when I clock it one more time, it's gonna say, hey, take the instruction pointer plus B, which is zero, plus carry in of set to one, and then set that back to the SPC register. So when I clock that, boom, now we're in instruction two. Cool, so I could say, okay, six, well, I wanna go back down to three. So I'm gonna need a minus three. Um, since this is six bits sign extended, a minus three would be, uh, let's see. So we have to do, uh, let's see, so this would be three. So if we pop these down, and then do one, two, three, four. So that is an invert. And then plus one. So a negation is plus one. So this right here should be minus three. And now if I clock that once, the upper bits get set instead of clear because we are sign extending the bottom six bits, which is exactly what you would expect to happen in this case. And now when we clock it one more time, the B register gets loaded with that. And now if we clock it again one more time, it's going to say, hey, I want six minus three, which is on the bus the way we'd expect it to. And now if I clock that, boom, we've just computed six minus three. And then also, funny enough, the carry is set because uh, subtraction overflows the carry. So that's exactly what you would expect if you're saying the carry bit is always the carry from the eighth bit being added together, which is what we wanted. And now it's doing the second to last instruct or the second to last microcode, which is hey, output zero to the bus to input to B. And so B is now cleared as you would expect. And then the final thing that we want to do is we want to add one, which is exactly what's going on here. We're doing go to three here. So let me turn this back to adding one, which is where it is. But, you know, that is a single step through the mini dragon, which currently has jump relative immediate, which would actually, you know, do something to the in instruction register, but I haven't tested that yet. So, you know, probably not going to do a live test and watch it fail and be embarrassed. Um, but we've walked through the add immediate with the um, emulated memory bus, and we've seen that this always incre uh, increments by one because the microcode for add immediate knows that the add immediate instruction is one byte wide. So there are a couple instructions in this, namely an add immediate, which takes a full 8-bit value stored in the next byte after that um, instruction, and a long jump, which takes the two bytes stored after the instruction and loads them into the instruction pointer so that you can jump to any arbitrary address. Um, so obviously those are two bytes and three bytes respectively, and the microcodes for that increment this instruction pointer when it needs to in order to put it in the right spot to skip past the two or to long jump or to move it or do blah, 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 this and that. So the microcoding is capable, since incrementing that is one microcode, it's capable of having variable instruction decoding relatively easy because all it is is the instructions themselves include how far to go and most instructions just go forward by one which is a output z a zero to b and then add one to zero so uh, add b plus the instruction pointer plus the carry and set to one 
which always increments you up. And then of course, you know, like skip if takes the flag output, puts that sign extended on the on the bus, so either a zero one loads it in B, and then you get B is either zero one plus the instruction pointer plus the carry in of one, which which translates to either going to the next instruction or skipping the next instruction. So that is how this system does control flow. Um, you'll notice that you can't skip if a um, add immediate, or sorry, a uh, load immediate because that is two bytes and it can only skip one byte. And so you would probably do a skip if followed by a jump relative immediate to move around. And the, the assembler has macros for that. So you don't actually think about that when you're coding, um, but it's just things to think about similar to like MIPS has the uh, branch slot at the end of a branch afterwards it always executes. You know, little quirks like that happen in plenty of systems. But, you know, now once I take it, I can put it out of manual mode and I can start clocking it, at which point you'll notice that now we are clocking automatically and we're popping through the entire address space here. And we're doing so relatively slowly. And of course, the A register is doing the exact same thing too, because this is incrementing by one, the A register is incrementing by one. And you'll see that we're slowly walking through that. And then I can pop over here and I can increase the speed, at which point now it's going a lot faster and you can barely see the A register top bits. And you can also see the flag bits because every time it rolls over from 255 to zero, the zero flag um, gets set and the uh, carry flag gets set for that instruction. Um, and yeah, that's about it. That's the mini dragon doing uh, an actual thing and actually getting through all of the microcodes for the add immediate to a register which is basically proven everything. It's proven the microcode um, counter, it's proven the instruction register, it's proven the, um, what's it called? The um, immediate register, it's proven the instruction decoder logic, it's proven the ALU core and the ALU buses and the ALU output, it's proven the 8-bit bottom of the uh, adder for the A register, and it's also proven the full thing for the SPC, PC, and IP register, and it's proven the B register is all working, and it's also proven that a lot of this decoding logic here is working. So, you know, we're actually getting to a point where real integration has occurred, and, you know, we're sweeping the address space relatively slowly, but this is not a fast CPU by any means. It is simply here to exist and be happy. Um, but yeah, thanks for listening along, and that is the demonstration of the current state of the Mini Dragon.